Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is take apart this large rear projection TV. I actually found it in a dumpster. Whomever threw it in did cut the uh, appliance wire or plug and threw out the rest. But I do want to tell that person and anyone else, these are a great source of scrappable material. These are 100% scrappable. I could bring these into a scrapyard as is and get electronic weight price, which is currently right now in London, Ontario, five to six cents a pound Canadian. And this is heavy. This is actually 70 pounds in its entirety. However, before I do that, I do want to take out some of the goodies inside. There is some great copper inside, some gold, some brass, some tin, and other good items. So what I want to do today is not only show you how to separate the material and identify it, but more importantly, how to maximize your profit and divert this whole thing away from the landfill. And the great thing about this as well is once I do remove the goodies that I want to take out for max profit, I can still close it up and bring the rest of this in and get electronic weight price for the rest of it. So that is definitely a great thing. Um, for the sake of this video, I do uh, already remove, or I did already remove the back screws, but just want to quickly show you, this is an early 2000 model. It was made in 2007. And the interesting thing about these rear projection TVs is you will find them sometimes on garbage aid, people get rid of them. But if I remove the top screen and turn it, you can see the reason it is called the rear projection TV. There is my front screen, but inside of this is a lot of empty space. There is a mirror type um, apparatus in the back here. And the projector, if you can see that, is on the bottom there projecting towards the mirror and then goes outward. So interesting item. The goodies though, I'm going to turn this, are on the back circuit board right here. I am going to angle this for you. Uh, as you can see, I have removed this. I will put it back on afterwards, but just going to angle this for you so you can see it. And I have already removed a lot of the screws to get out the back panel. And I do want to take this opportunity to address a comment I had from a different uh, video about screws and bolts. And the reason I call these tin screws, for example, uh, opposed to steel, is at a scrapyard, the difference between tin and steel is the thickness of the metal. In order to be classified as steel, the metal has to be thicker than a quarter inch. And some of these screws are thicker than a quarter inch. So these are the black ones that came off the TV. This is another bolt that came off of the bottom of a dishwasher. This technically would be steel. Some of these would also be steel, but there are some really tiny ones like this that would probably be tin. And for sake of time and for myself to speed it up, I put all of my nuts and bolts and screws that I get from my scrapping into one container and I will bring them all in as tin, regardless of the thickness. And that's just to speed up time, but also just to keep them in a, se in a separate container. Uh, I do that also for safety, so I don't transport them and they fall out of my vehicle and potentially pop a tire or my own tire. Um, but also because it is a lot easier to get tin or shred loads than steel. Steel is more things like your structural beams, uh, trampoline poles, for example, and I-beams, different things like that are steel. Whereas items like, you know, sheet panel like this, your sheet from furnaces and your outer coatings of dishwashers, microwaves, uh, washer, dryers, ovens, those are more tin or shred where I go in Southwestern Ontario. And I, that is why I put them in there. So you do have to check the thickness. As I said, some of them are steel. You do also want to check your nuts and bolts before you do assume that they are going to be tin or steel because some of them are made of brass. So obviously if they do not stick to a magnet, they could be brass or something else. You scratch them, if they reveal a, coal, a gold color underneath, they're definitely brass. But all of these, hopefully that answered that question, I throw them in one bucket and I bring them in as tin shred. Okay, here is the back panel once I removed it. This too, if I put a magnet to it, you can see the magnet sticks. This is going to be tin or shred where I go to. Again, some places do not call it shred. Some places don't call it tin. I guess it depends on where you are. Maybe it's a Canadian thing, but 
We call it here in Southwest Ontario, tin or shred. And this right now is actually going for 10 to 11 cents a pound. So definitely better than my electronic weight price. Um, and definitely something I like to separate, especially with the price of it now. And it is very easy to build up weight. And as you can see the thickness, it does not take up much space and it is heavy. This is actually a couple pounds right here. I do have a circuit board that I'm gonna remove off of this. Uh, there is some tin on this coating as well. Uh, sometimes I will just leave this in for the weight as tin because this coating is tin. The circuit board, I'll leave it on. But uh, especially because there is no precious metals that I can see that flap is not gold. So sometimes you do want to check your circuit boards. There might be gold. This one doesn't have it. However, this one, this is the main control that I just have to remove the last screw. Sorry. Okay, I've got two panels here with circuit boards. And the first one, I just removed the cap. Here too is some more tin. This fan does have a small copper motor in it, very tiny. I will actually just throw this whole thing into my electronic waste and get five to six cents a pound. Um, I have also, depending on the size, sometimes these motors are bigger or the fans are bigger. If that is the case, I will cut around it and I will just throw this middle part here into my copperberry motors and get 10 to 13 cents a pound. But for this one, very little copper, I won't. I'll just throw it all in and get the e-waste price. But this tin, obviously, you're going to separate this as well. This circuit board, you can see at a scrap yard, again, you also have to depend, or it depends on where you live. Some scrap yards will categorize your circuit boards into low grade, medium grade, high grade, depending on the precious metals on, si on it and inside of it. This one uh, does have some gold. That chip right there, you can see the corner there, there is some gold under that. Um, unfortunately, where I go at my scrapyard does only gives me one based price. It's about five to six cents a pound. Um, so in my opinion, definitely way better taking off the precious metals on here as well as copper and other good items that you find on circuit boards because I'm going to get a lot more for those than bringing this in whole. Other options, I have had questions from people where I can sell circuit boards. Boardsort.com in the United States will take chips like this. They will take circuit boards like this if there is uh, gold showing as well as all of these little chips you see here do have value as well. You can separate them. Depends on shipping costs and how much you have. But other places, Kijiji, um, different uh, places, people will buy chips like this as well if they are refurbishing computers or if they do gold extraction on their own. So definitely in your interest to check, especially if a scrapyard only gives you a base price or something that doesn't reflect the value of the precious metals. So definitely I am gonna take that chip off before I bring the rest of the circuit board into my scrapyard. But again, it's gonna be worth something, definitely better than going into the landfill. Here is my other one that has a nice casing uh, a tin casing. There are some goodies on here. Beautiful aluminum heat sink. I always grab these off of circuit boards. Aluminum heat sinks, an excellent source of extrusion, which is a form of aluminum. And this right here is actually going for right now $1.53 a pound. I have two great big bags of over 80 pounds of just aluminum heat sinks from different uh, circuit boards. They obviously come in different sizes depending on what you are taking apart. But the reason this is called extrusion, as you can see, I've just turned it, it does have grooves in it. Any type of aluminum that looks like it's been put through a press or a mold is extrusion. And at its highest price I've ever seen, as I said, it continues to say at $1.53 around that in London, Ontario. So an excellent source and circuit boards are a great one for it. These chips as well, I will cut around these chips. They will, people online stores, board sort, will buy these as well. And all I do is just take a knife quickly, just cut the teeth off and I will separate these. There is right here um, another gold chip. You can see there is a gold connector right there. I will cut that off and get those gold prongs right there. I do have a small vial for it for later for gold recovery. And as well, there are right here Crystal oscillators, there is a little bit of silver in this, this little bubble there. There's one there, two, 
Okay, so those are other things that if you are interested in micro scrapping, and I do have videos on those, but uh, I have not actually refined it yet. I just store them up. But as I said, crystal oscillators are another one. As well, any type of your USB jacks do have gold. These pins, if I turn it, hopefully you can see it. They do pertain some gold plated pins there. I do take those out as well, put them into a vial, and hopefully one day I will extract the gold. Um, but again, once I remove these off and remove the gold, these are still gonna be circuit boards, as well as a really nice heavy piece of tin. Uh, the other thing I do wanna address right now is the power cord that that person did cut off. You can see some cord running on here as well. And I do have what is left of the cord. You can see right here, for an example, I did bring in another type. So it's the same model, just white instead of black. But at a scrapyard, the reason you will see often on garbage day people driving by and just cutting the cord is because these cords are a great source of scrappable material. And appliance wire at a scrapyard is categorized into two categories. You have 40% appliance wire and 60%. And the reason this would be classified as 60% or higher value is because scrapyards look at plastic to copper ratio and copper recovery. This has, you can see, two individual strands of copper with one coating of plastic. There is obviously more copper in here, less plastic. And this is actually gonna be 60% going for $2.57 a pound in London, Ontario right now. Other wires, this is a separate one you can see. This is off of a microwave. And this wire is classified as 40% because you can see an outer coating of plastic, three individual strands of copper inside of that that are coated as well. So this has more plastic, less copper recovery. This is your 40%. And currently this is going for $1.58 a, a pound in London, Ontario. So still an excellent price, but you definitely want to separate the two because obviously if you have them all together, you're gonna to get the lower value and all your hard work if you um, took the time to separate it incorrectly or if you uh, took the time to store them up, you are going to lose in the long run in terms of maximizing your profit. So 60%, 40%. Uh, the other item I do wanna say is sometimes you will see TV cords that do when you cut into them. Don't assume all TV cords are your 60%. Some of them you will see the two coated wires and one small thin layer around it that has plastic. That is gonna be your 40% because like I said, the rule is two layers of plastic, more plastic and lower value. But again, great item, but the rest of this TV does have value as well. So last item I do wanna check or look at is I gotta take out this one pillar here, stand if you will, to get this out. Um, there is other wire in here. You can see the wire that runs all the way through. Um, so obviously the little wires you got that I have cut. Again, you do want to check if they are copper inside of them. They are going to be your 60% appliance wire. Um, and I did have a question from someone asking me about... Electronic wire. I just want to quickly hit this out just a second. Okay, so here's some more tin shred, which is great. My circuit board here. This is a circuit board that I love to see. Look at the nice copper here. This copper I will take off. This transformer, you can see the really nice spool of copper. And again, the difference, obviously, if I was to bring this circuit board as is in, I'm going to get... Uh, five to six cents a pound, but just a little bit of work. These three um, heat sinks are gonna be my extrusion. These two copper donuts, I always refer to them as, these are gonna have number two copper, which is currently going for $4.48 a pound. I pry them off, I will hit them with the hammer, and I will just unravel that copper. So definitely a way better price than bringing the circuit board in whole. The transformer as well. Some transformers, if I look at them and there's a lot of paper inside of them, I will leave them as transformers. Transformers are going for about 10 to 15 cents a pound. But because this has some beautiful copper spool, you can see I am actually going to take that copper out, put it into number two. And the rest of this outer coating, uh, I, it's magnesium. So I will put it into a separate container for magnesium. 
Um, so that is all that different stuff that is metallic, or I'm sorry, magnetic. You can see it is magnetic, but a lot of these types of transformers, if you hit them and it breaks open, um, that is magnesium. Um, I will also remove, you can see the transformer here, that does have copper as well in it. All of this wire, look inside of it, that is copper, so that's gonna be my 60%. Here, these ones again, these are also copper, so this is some 60% wire there. Um, I will leave these capacitors on, they're not worth much. Oh, here is another um, heat sink. And the difference between these two, I should also mention that, is there are categories for extrusion. This is clean, so aluminum is um, me metallic in look. This one right here is painted black, so you do wanna make sure you separate these because we have clean aluminum and painted. It's only worth about two cents less, but if I put it all together, I'm gonna get the lower value. So that's just definitely something to make sure you maximize your profit by separating it. So clean, painted, and there are definitely different painted colors. I've seen different aluminum heat sinks that are gold or blue or uh, red. So those are all your painted. I do also have right here, I always love these. These are my relay boxes. Inside of these, when I break it open, will have a silver contact as well as a small spool of um, copper. So just gonna quickly get you uh, one that I've shown on a number of videos. So this is what you will see once I open it. That little dot at the top is silver. So I will take those out and put them into a container. Um, and there is, as I said, some small spools of copper inside of those as well. Um, as well, there's another little donut of copper there. It all adds up and definitely better than my uh, five to six cents circuit board price. As well on the bottom here, very easy to look. This also too is magnetic, so there's some more tin. And the rest of this circuit board, do not worry if it breaks as you're taking these items off of it. They will still take it as a circuit board, um, especially where I go given the price of it. They don't care. I've brought some in that are just completely mangled, but they will take it as well. Okay. Um, the, speaker, the speakers I sometimes will take. You can see the speakers way on the bottom there, that silver or metallic circle there. Um, some people do take the little piece of copper out of that. I will do that as well. Um, and the rest of it, um, I have actually used different magnets from TVs for magnet fishing. They are a powerful magnet. Um, but these ones, I will probably just throw into my tin shred. I will remove the bracket here on this as well. And as well, I will get a little bit more of my circuit board. Uh, I do want to quickly open this last one up. The projector, I don't like to take the projector because there is in the projector some oil. I don't open it up. I will actually leave it. I'm just going to quickly open this one. Last couple screws. I see another circuit board that's going to go to the projector um, that I'm going to address once I remove these large, long screws. So there definitely is a little bit of work to get to these pieces. But again, the beauty of this is it is not only going to maximize my profit by taking as much of that copper and aluminum heat sinks off in the tin, but knowing that the rest of this is still going to go to a scrapyard and not the landfill. So that is definitely peace of mind. Okay. So here is as well. There is going to be a small motor inside of that. Look at that. There's my model number. Uh, and I did, obviously I couldn't check to see if it works, but inside of this, again, here's some more screws. Uh, I got some more tin for sure. But I'm uh, going to open this up to show you. It's almost like a mystery reveal here. What's inside this container here? I do see a little bit of brass. Probably going to be... All right. There is going to be a copper motor inside of that. This, is, I think, is the fan, the heating fan. I'm just going to break this with a hammer uh, in a bit. But that is tin. There's a small copper motor in there. I am going to put that into my copper bearing motor pile. Uh, I will open it up. It looks a lot like, just a second, you gotta get one. It's gonna look a lot like this. This is off of a microwave, but it's the same type of style, just gonna be popping the cap off of that. 
make sure that little piece of brass goes in brass, but there is a little bit of copper in there that I'm gonna get. And as well, this little circuit board, once I remove the back panel, as I said, there's just different layers of this. <laughs> get to it. Okay, it might have to be off camera, but there is obviously going to be right here. I do want to show this wire. So inside of here is going to be another circuit board that I'm going to have to get to. But I do want to show this wire because of the topic of wire. So this wire, bringing it up to the camera, you can see inside of there, there is copper strands, but there is a metallic coating on the outside. This is another type of wire that you are going to see um, at, a, at a scrap yard. This is called computer wire or electronic wire. So this or any type of prongs like this that you see on recent computers that have these, all of these have a metallic coating around the copper. This is going for about 90 cents a pound. So you definitely don't want to put it with your copper ones that are electronic appliance wire. So electronic wire. Um, and the last thing, obviously, some of it you can actually see right here. So once I remove this panel, I will get out the rest of this copper wire. As well, sorry, there is a small control panel here. And because I have taken out the things that I want out of here, I am just going to close this back up and I will bring the rest of this in as e-waste. So probably have right here, probably about 60 pounds, 55 pounds left. Still gonna get money for that, but definitely wanted to make sure that I got this great circuit board for the copper, the extrusion or aluminum heat sinks, the gold that comes off my different chips. Uh, again, also if there was the appliance wire that was cut, but there is definitely some 60% and 40% wire in there, as well as electronic wire, and some really nice heavy pieces of tin that I definitely want to get better value from than bringing this TV and as whole. So hopefully that was informative. Again, a lot of different items in here. I have not actually taken apart a lot of these, but you do find them often on garbage day, especially now if people are getting rid of them. Definitely better than going and dropping it into a dumpster. Um, please comment down below. Please continue asking questions. I will answer them best I can. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.